I am King Mitchell. There was a time when boats were made of wood and men were made of steel when drive, determination and desire was all a person had to take him or her to the next port of call in life. The documentary you're about to see is about such a man. His name, Augustus King Mitchell. It is said that the name given to a child at its birth influences the destiny of that human being. That seems to be true in the case of this gentleman. Augustus, his parents named him. Augustus means venerable. Venerable, of course, means commanding great respect because of great age and the dignity that attends that great age. Augustus King Mitchell has indeed achieved that. He was born 100 years ago and he's still alive. Venerable indeed. The name Augustus also means majestic. Isn't it ironic that many years after his parents named him that significant name Augustus, the community whom Augustus Mitchell served and the people whose lives he greatly influenced named him King, accorded him the soubriquet King, majestic, majesty. The name Augustus also means the increaser or one who increases and this for me has the most significance here is a man born in the early part of the 20th century the very early part when colonialism walked tall he was born black in the height of colonialism on a dry little island called union born in a wattle and daub construction this man took himself from zero to 100 literally Today, he is a man of wealth, a man of significance, a man of success. There's something mystical about Augustus King Mitchell, something spiritual, something beyond the ordinary, which he himself admits. He says, I am King Mitchell. I am just King Mitchell. You understand me? But within me, I am more than King Mitchell. My name is Chester Connell. I invite you to look at this heritage documentary, this Caribbean biography about a man Augustus King Mitchell. And I was born from a poor family. And from the time I was born and I realized what was ponies, I was going to school. And all along I was praying to God to help me that I became better off than what my parents are. King Mitchell learned lessons of leadership early including the art and power of delegation. In those days, we only have one school on the island, one schoolmaster from Barbados. His name was Mr. Archer. No other teachers, you know. I was a teacher from the time I was in Standard One. I know it happened. In all the class, when the teacher come down and he have the blackboard and he set up the lesson in the class and he take the brightest child in the class, leave them to teach the others. He go in the next class and he do the same thing. He go in the next class and he do the same thing until he reached up to six standard. So all the classes is going on full speed ahead teaching. That's how he managed the school.
When I reached the age where I had to come out of school, nothing to do. All children, you come out and nothing to do. In 1929, he was given a rare opportunity to work in St. Vincent with a businessman, Hugh Keane, a Trinidadian who lived in St. Vincent and who conducted business here. The best thing in my life was that. From poverty, when the man took me in St. Vincent, it was he and his wife living in a one-room house with a sofa like that took me in the house as his own. He took me in his house as his own brother or son or whatever. His wife took me up the same. We lived together as one family. I and him running the shop. I didn't know nothing about shop. In those days was penny and cent and cent and cent. And I in the shop with him, I learned everything and I learned business from that time to now. In 1930, Augustus Mitchell headed for the Dutch island of Curaçao, where his father worked as a labourer. Peter Mitchell advised his son in St. Vincent, acquiring his passport for the first time, to identify himself on the passport as a cook and not as a laborer, as was the habit of most Vincentians immigrating for work at the time. Two days before I arrived in Curacao, there was a Bajan fella called Gibbs, had a job in the staff kitchen department. Good job. Something happened and they had to fire him two days before I reached. So when I reached there, that the space was vacant. You know, you understand me? So when my father took me in the office, the subject come up. But we want somebody for that department. The office was well, this one said, but that's a nice fella, that's a young fella, blah, blah, blah. They take me right away, push me in that job. A prestigious job. My salary was more than the people who were working in the field. My salary was more than my father's salary. The 17-year-old Mitchell and his father worked in Curacao for two years before the company laid off a number of workers, including Peter Mitchell. He informed his son, Augustus, that he was returning to Union Island and suggested that he, Augustus, return with him. His young son resisted. I said, Papa, nothing would happen to me. I would take care of myself. He said, no, I can't go back home without you. Your mother will kill me to know I care you and left you there. When my father tell me that, I make up my mind and say, right, Papa, I'll go. I go and tender my resignation and come home with my father. During the time I was there for all these two years, when I get my envelope every PD like everybody, I just hand it to my father. I didn't need any money at all. I got everything in the staff kitchen. Every time I get my PD, I just go meet my father, I give him to him. He is the one who used to save it. So when we get laid off and to come home, we got all that money. With money saved, Augustus Mitchell and his father returned to Union Island and established himself as an entrepreneur before the age of 20 with his very first business venture, the purchase of the schooner Radial. 
There is a boat running the trade between Union and St. Vincent weekly, bringing supply for the people in Union Island. That was the only connection between St. Vincent and Union. And the next little one used to run the mail. That boat was owned by Mr. McIntosh, Sidney McIntosh in Bequay. When we reached home, the captain who was running the boat tell us that the man would sell the boat. And that was my aim. I and my father the same time reach home today, tomorrow, with the same boat coming to St. Mason, drop us in Bakewood. Richard Knight, Mr. McIntosh, Open up, you have our upstairs and downstairs. And you take us in. Cold weather. And we sit down. I told him my mission. He was happy. Yeah, you want to sell it. And we made bargain. And we bought the boat. My father and I. Lolly Simmons was born in Bequay and has lived there most of his life. A local historian with a wide knowledge of the history of the Grenadines, he is also the curator of a small maritime museum which he owns. His knowledge of the maritime and general history of the Grenadines is extensive. In an interview for this documentary, he points out that the radial would have been known to King Mitchell for an important reason. He had known a radial because a radial used to run the mail from uh, through the Grenadines. So what he really was behind is getting the mail service. So he bought a radial, assuring that he would have the service. He, he had good foresight, man. He was really there with Union and every move. He must have seen the earlier trails of the Mullerines, who were the ones in Union in those days who were building ships. So he just wanted to, to step up there like that. James Mallory was one of the wealthiest people in St. Vincent. He was a Jewish money lender, him and John Max. In the early 20th century, when Augustus Mitchell was born, most of the population on Union Island had to eke out a living from the land. And those who were very successful took to the sea and to shipping. There were shipbuilding and fishermen. So a lot of the men that went to Aruba and coming back, saving the money and coming back, build ships. And in back to some of them bought a state. Having bought the radio from Sidney McIntosh, Augustus Mitchell and his father sailed on to Union. Well, we rich now. We got nobody have nothing in Union Island. We got this boat doing the and my father was a seaman. I come out in Curious, so young. I leave all my friends and schoolmates, go to Curacao, come back and meet them the same place, bare feet, then get no walk, no walk in there. You understand me? So I, be, I become, let the big shot between them. So from that time, I realized I started to make children. My name is Adela James, the daughter of Augustus Mitchell. I was born in Ashton, in an island, in a place called Valley, 1932, the 27th of August. Two, three children, two, three girls, young girls, and all the young girls. You know, you come out in Curacao, you're not like the boys that you leave there. You above them and a good looking. So all the best girl was on my side. With his children in the care of his parents and extended family, the 22-year-old Augustus Mitchell decided to leave Union Island again to further secure his financial foothold. I was sensible enough to know I cannot stay in Union Island. I was sensible enough to almost go out. 
The question of Guyana key mean that Guyana is a good place. Golden Diamond. I got all the history about it. And it's a history that started with the legend of El Dorado. The Golden One.